So in the early 1800s, things started to change a little bit here in the Americas. In the North, where traditionally you had found a lot of these um, small kind of craftsman workshops all throughout the North, now you began to see more of these large factory scaled um, businesses starting to pop up all over the North. Um, and these large factories, which employed a lot of people coming in and out, it really changed the way that the economy and the market worked here in the U.S., as well as in the South. In the South, you saw a lot of more small subsistence family farms, and those gave way to these large plantations that were run by a majority of slaves that worked in them. So the landscape of the country had started to change throughout the 1800s. And a lot of this began to change the way that a lot of people felt about how things were running in the United States. Um, most people equated the fact that if you had money, it meant that you had power. And a lot of people felt that in the US and Washington DC, all of those that were in power and all of those in the government were very wealthy and kind of out of touch with everybody else and they thought they controlled everything. And so a lot of the people that began to spring up throughout the 1800s, people like the small farmers that were running out west now where we had a lot more farmers and settlers out west going, you had the slaveholders in the south. A lot of these what were known as the common people felt that they didn't really have a voice in the government. And so when Andrew Jackson came along as a war hero and kind of a poor person who worked his way up the ranks of the military and becoming very influential, he was seen as the common people's president. He was seen as the common people's candidate and he promised to be able to give them a voice. And that really won him, ran him a lot of support throughout the country. Also during the 1800s, we began to see changes in democracy and who was able to vote. Right before you needed to be a landowner to vote and a lot of these land owning rights um, in many places began to be abolished. And so democracy and voting and suffrage was opened up to a lot larger number of people than it was before. Um, and so the qualifications for being able to vote granted a lot more white male suffrage, which also then added to the ability of having more votes for Andrew Jackson. Um, the public began holding nominating conventions for candidates. No longer was it now restricted to just party members and the electoral college to just electing um, candidates for running for office. But now a lot more people were involved in the process. They were known as nominating conventions. And so this widespread expanding of democracy that began to happen between the 1820s and 1830s is sometimes referred to as Jacksonian democracy, which opened up the idea of suffrage and the voice in government to more of the common people, to more of the less elite wealthy people that we always saw within government before.